<laughs> so, you want to use Open Broadcaster like a pro. If you've been watching our streams, anything on Team PGP or other stuff that we've done with Tech Syndicate, you know that we're spread out all over the country, but we're able to put it together with our cameras and make it look like we're all in the same room. Well, Open Broadcaster is a large part of how we do that. This is our setup. I'm going to need a diagram and some help to explain it to you. But this, if you want to do it, you're going to have everything that you need to be able to do this yourself. Now on this channel, you won't see us using your Patreon dollars to put it toward fancy graphics. No, all you get is whiteboard. <laughs> I've got Grizzle here who helped set up all this for the uh, Team PGP game stream and some of the infrastructure that we use on the back end um, at Tech Syndicate for video streaming. And this is the diagram that we're going to use to explain to you how this setup works for game streaming. So it's multicam and multi-stream. And so I guess these are the individual players that go into a Linode server or a Linode virtual machine. Now all this is is just a server on the internet, right? Yeah, this is going to be your server that's running Nginx. And you need, Linode is a good option because you're going to need a ton of bandwidth for this part of it. So what's going on here is it looks like player one, player two, and player three are running their own local copies of Open Broadcaster on their computers. And that Open Broadcaster is capturing both the game footage and the webcam footage and putting that in one video stream. This is an RTMP stream. So basically these OBS uh, installations, they're modified with the video plugin. If you're using Windows, Linux will do that natively. So they're just RTMP streaming raw streams directly into our Nginx running on this VM. Okay, cool. So all of these video streams will travel out over the individual players, internet service providers. Now we try to stream at about three to five megabit. Three to five megabit is what YouTube and Hitbox and Twitch and all those recommend. But instead of streaming directly there, we're actually streaming to this virtual machine out on the internet running Nginx. And we also are running GNOME Desktop and another copy of Open Broadcaster on our virtual machine on the internet. Now the reason we use that second OBS is because we want to put these streams together in a four up camera scenario or three up or ever how many you have. Because while YouTube offers us a multi-camera stream, Twitch and Hitbox will only take one. So we want to put that together and have a four camera or even a picture in picture in some cases so that we can send it to the services that only take one stream. So what, what you're saying is that the streams that we get from the individual players come to Nginx and because YouTube supports multiple streams, we actually send all those streams back out to YouTube. But for Twitch and Hitbox, we mix together the streams. We also include the Twitch, uh, Twitch chat, I think, and other, you know, whatever o other open broadcaster plugins you want to use. We mix all that together on the GNOME desktop and then send that out as sort of the main camera stream for YouTube, but that is the only camera stream for Twitch and Hitbox. That's right. And because Nginx can take any kind of input, it's trivial to just keep pushing things back into it. So you could add any number of services. As more services come, gaming services come online, you can just keep adding to this scenario as long as you can support the bandwidth. So if we had an operator that was sitting, that maybe wasn't playing the game and they were logged into the GNOME desktop remotely, they could actually switch between individual scenes and whatever else that you might have set up in Open Broadcaster and the additional plugins that Open Broadcaster has. So you could have almost like a, like a control center running here controlling what was being streamed out there. That's right. If you were playing a turn-based game, for example, you could easily have a director who just kept switching the perspective so you're always watching the current active player. Now in terms of bandwidth, what we're really looking at here is that it's not really any different than your normal streaming setup because each individual player is just streaming to this virtual machine on the internet. The device that really needs a lot of bandwidth is just this machine because it's got, you know, 5, 10, 15 megabit of input and then, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 megabit of output assuming these three input streams. Maybe more depending on how you mix the footage together and that kind of thing. So that is a lot of bandwidth, at least for, at least for an American connection, unless you're on Google Fiber or some other kind of fiber optic. And as long as you just want to do single camera services and you don't mind split screens and things like that, then you don't have to worry about that limitation quite as much. And you can add as many cameras as you want. Okay, cool. Let's take a look at our setup, like the specifics of our setup and the software that we're using to actually do the streaming. Just refer back to this diagram if it gets confusing because we do have like 17 copies of Open Broadcaster in the mix here. Oh, the other thing too is that if you wanted to, you could run the Nginx part of this on like a Raspberry Pi, but the part that really needs a lot of horsepower is the Open Broadcaster part for mixing the video together. All right, so what we're gonna do is use Ubuntu the GNOME version uh, workstation as our OBS computer, but also our Nginx server. Now, normally the Nginx server would be out on the internet, 
um, for the diagram that we showed you. But for this, we're actually going to run Nginx and Open Broadcaster on the same machine. So we're just going to make sure Ubuntu's up to date. This is 15.10. Probably 16.04 is right around the corner, but the process on 16.04 should be pretty much the same. <laughs> we're going to be streaming to local Nginx um, and then previewing what is coming to Nginx through Open Broadcaster on the same machine so that it's the maximum speed possible. And the magic of that comes from the RTMP module, which you have to install separately with your Nginx install. So we're going to go through that process now. We're using this guide from obsproject.com. WGET, the old Nginx installer here. <laughs> or curl if you so prefer. And then the module that makes the RTMP work. Unpack it all. And now we have to build Nginx manually with the command line to add this module. It's a lengthy process. There we go. start the server. Now sometimes on install you might have something else running on port 80 and you might have to kill that process. Nginx will not start if you have Apache for instance. In this case it looks like it started just fine. The next step of the process is to set up the uh, settings file, the configuration file, and that's where you're actually going to define all the different cameras that you're going to broadcast to that you'll later put together in OBS. I need to choose the correct window. I don't have Vim. <laughs> I have to get install it. So this is your configuration file. You really probably don't need to do much here. You really just want to go to the bottom and declare your RTMP channels. So first we want to describe our server. And you can copy this from the tutorial here. You just want to listen on a port and set the chunk size. This chunk size is just fine for a couple of oh. chunk size is just fine for YouTube and Twitch. And then we will define individual applications. Inside the server. And these are the URLs you can configure to broadcast to in the clients, right? Yes. Well, you will broadcast to these. So you'll set the live on. This will, your individual game OBSs will broadcast into this. And then using the media module on your recipient OBS, you will listen to these individual channels. 
live on to tell it to broadcast record off because you don't want to save local copies maybe you do if you want to save your streams for posterity it is possible to have nginx record them for you without taxing whatever computer you're playing the game on uh, but there are a variety of settings that you have to add in order to do that usefully so we'll define two applications here. So now we have two different RTMP channels that we can broadcast into and we can pick up an OBS and put together for a final stream that will then be pushed out to wherever we want, we want to stream to. So the thing that's left out of the OBS tutorial is how you also push that stream somewhere else. So like on YouTube, we've got our four up camera, which has all of our cameras, which we're showing you how to do with OBS but then our individual cameras are also relayed individually. Now keep in mind, if you only want to broadcast multiple picture-in-picture -picture or side-by-side -side videos to one location, you wouldn't use this because OBS is going to deal with that. But if, for example, let's say you wanted to send a 4-up camera with your friends or a picture-in-picture -picture camera with your friends, but you also wanted to stream your own stream to Hitbox as well as Twitch or YouTube, and you can do that here from NGINX. And to do that, you'd use the push command. And you can see an example here. Now, of course, we can't give you our uh, stream keys to show you an exact URL. But it's always in this format. Just push RTMP. And uh, if you're familiar with Twitch or YouTube, it'll give you which server you want to push to and then slash stream key and the stream key is of course your own personal thing that you should know from those services and you can set up as many of these as your uh, bandwidth will tolerate that's about five megabits of upload per camera that you want to push so in our situation we do one four person camera all on one screen and then three individual cameras and we do the four-person camera to Twitch. Because Twitch doesn't support multiple camera angles yet. But YouTube does. But the nice thing about this is if you're gaming from a bunch of different locations, um, you could have a server on Linode, for example, and everybody is sending their stream to Linode. Linode is assembling it, because Linode's got a ton of bandwidth, and then sending it on to YouTube and Twitch and Hitbox and whatever else you want. And that works really well. And then that way, you don't have to have one person that has tons of bandwidth. Everybody can have their own individual streams going, but your server on the internet is putting all the streams together and then sending it back out again because it's got the bandwidth to do that. Unless you've got Google Fiber, in which case it'll work fine. Or if you simply wanted to do, say, Twitch and Hitbox at the same time, but you don't want to run two instances of OBS, and you can let Linode take care of all of the bandwidth, this is a great solution for that, even if you're not looking to combine the videos later. Yeah, if you've only got like 5 megabits of upload bandwidth, you could upload at full quality to Linode and then stream at full 5 megabit from Linode to both YouTube and Twitch with no loss of quality. And that will work really well. And the final step, once you've got your configuration working, is to actually start NGINX. Or restart it in this case. Alright, so we've already got it running, in which case... We need to stop it with the stop command and then restart it. And now we have it listening on the server and applications that we define. All right, let's define uh, OBS, some OBS endpoints on the local computer and stream some games to it and see what happens. All right, so now we've got our Nginx configured and our Nginx restarted. Now we need to configure local OBS to pick up the video that's being dumped at those Nginx endpoints. So we're going to add a media source. And this is an option that you're going to get from installing the uh, video source module with your OBS that we covered earlier. You can name these whatever you want. Turn off the local file so you can manually type in your RTMP protocol for your... Uh, input and we're just using localhost because again nginx is running on the same machine you can leave input format blank 
And there we go. There's our first source, but we want more than one. So we'll go ahead and resize this. And add the other one. And this one's exactly the same, except we called it Nginx2. And there it is. You arrange these however you want. You can layer them with the order uh, properties. Bring whichever one to the front that you want. And you can also do cool things like picture in picture. Uh, another cool thing that you can do, although there are some limitations, is you can define multiple scenes. So sometimes we'll play a game that everybody's on the screen at once, so there's no reason to have four cameras. And you can actually switch those scenes on the fly just by clicking on them. And the last thing you want to worry about here is the audio. You have to remember that only one stream should be broadcasting audio. Otherwise, it's just going to sound like madness. So pick whoever gets to be the audio stream and turn that one down. Or turn the others down. So one thing you can do if you want some stats to see how your RTMP streams are doing, you can set up the slash stat folder, which involves setting this in the Nginx configuration file and then copying the uh, stat XSL style sheet transform file from the example module folder into the HTML folder. That's your RTMP module that you unpack when you set up Nginx in the first place. It has this XSL file that you'll need. And once you've done that, you'll get this nice, uh, uh, you can see, actually let's look at, uh, in Nginx, much like we set up RTMP, this is a very similar process, but here we're setting up HTTP protocol. So we just set up a slash stat uh, location here and told it where to find the style sheet and we told it to RTMP stat all on that location. So here we are at slash stat and it's going to tell us uh, how much we've broadcast, what our stream rate is, and things about the video that's being broadcast here. So the last thing that leaves is client setup. Now client setup is something that I think you guys are probably already really familiar with and it's not going to be super complicated. Uh, basically you just want to set up your encoding you know, we usually go for an encoding of about 3,000 3, kilobits per second. Now, configuring your live stream, you're going to want to set it mode live stream and streaming source custom. And then for your FMS URL, you're going to put in the IP address of the server that you're running this on. Now, if you're running it on Linode, you'll put in the IP address of your machine on Linode. That'll be a public IP address. But if you're running it through a VPN or internally or on your local area network, you're just going to use the IP address of that machine that's running Linux and Open Broadcaster and the whole nine yards. Now, you don't even have to run Open Broadcaster on Linux. You could do that on Windows. I mean, that would be fine, too. Now under advanced settings, depending on what your computer capabilities are, the X264 preset, uh, very fast and fast, and what fast means there is how much time it spends trying to encode each frame. So fast and very fast are gonna just spend as little time as possible encoding each frame, which is easier on your CPU. But if you've got the spare CPU horsepower, you can specify fast or medium or something like that and get better quality because it'll spend more CPU cycles on each frame. But if your computer can't keep up, then it's gonna make your, your stream stutter. Now, if your computer supports uh, quick sync or NV encoding or you know something else other than the software H.264 encoding, then you should try those and make sure that that works or see if that works and works a little better because those will use hardware acceleration, which is maybe a little bit easier on your setup. So that's how you do it if you want multi-stream setup. Big thanks to Grizzle for helping set it up for Tech Syndicate and Team PGP and Beer Games Beer and the whole nine yards. We're going to uh, go play some games now, I guess, probably, sort of, kind of, whatever. But there is one more note on security. We haven't gone over security, and so that means anybody can use these services if you're just on the internet. So you want to make sure that you set up a username and password for the streaming services, or that you whitelist by IP, or do both, depending on, you know, what your preferences are. So if you're going to embark on this and you need some help, there's a ton of people waiting that can help you in the forums at techsyndicate.com. I'm Wendell. And I'm Grizzle. And we'll see you there.